Hi everyone, it's Rusty here again, and today I'm going to talk about a couple things, a couple kits that really get a lot less press than they should, and that is your first aid kit and your hygiene kit. These two kits can go a long way to making your trip safer and more enjoyable. Stay tuned. So before I jump right into the contents of these kits, let's talk a little philosophy for a moment. Accident insurance. It's that thing that you must have but hope you don't use. For example, your homeowner's insurance. Every year I write out a check and I hope that I've wasted my money. Why? Well, because the pain of wasting that money on homeowner's insurance is nowhere near the pain of dealing with a fire no matter how good my coverage is. So the question comes up, can you prepare for everything or do you use insurance instead? And you, can you prevent everything? out on the trail. So this comes down to your trail philosophy. What is the first aid kit good for? Is it good for dealing with major trauma? Or is it to stop minor problems from becoming major problems? Well, you can tell by the color coding what my choice is. It's the green one. I think it's to stop minor problems from becoming major problems. Now, this seems to be a controversial opinion because I had expressed this on a comment on somebody's blog somewhere. And it wasn't the author who disagreed with me, but another commenter disagreed and said, you're wrong, you're out there in the woods, things are going to happen, count on it. You must be prepared for everything. Well, I wasn't saying that you don't have to be prepared for everything. I was saying the first aid kit is not that preparation. Now, if this person was a scoutmaster and had a group of kids with them, yeah, you're out camping, maybe you should have a comprehensive first aid kit with you. But when you're long distance hiking, especially long distance solo hiking, you have a weight restriction. Even if you're not trying to go ultra light, you still have to deal with the weight on your back. So that's why I choose the second one, and we'll go into that in a moment. So let's look at what can happen out there. This is a hiker I met in the Green Mountains. It was actually at the trailhead near Bennington. I had just finished a 20-mile loop, and when I got to the trailhead, he was there, and he had a nice trail angel set up. And the reason he was trail angeling instead of out hiking is because he had been on the Pacific Crest Trail, and he broke a leg. And he had to hike 40 miles with a broken leg in order to be seen. There's nothing in his first aid kit that he could have had that would help him deal with that. He can't carry crutches with him in his first aid kit. Same thing when I fell and dislocated my shoulder. When that happens, am I going to bring a sling in my first aid kit? Hardly. All I could do was hike into the nearest town, assess where I was, and in that particular case, I decided to go home. And sometimes, that's your backup plan. Like the bumper stickers say, things occur. So do I have an insurance plan? Well, I do. First, we have to recognize that hiking is inherently risky. Driving to work is inherently risky. But when you're out hiking, yeah, things can happen. What's my insurance? I've had videos on it. I'll probably do a more comprehensive video on it. But I bring a tracker with me. That helps me if I get injured so severely that I need help. Well, I can press the SOS button and I can get help. Now, if I fall unconscious, at least my wife will see I've stopped moving. Like, hey, it's the middle of the day. He hasn't moved for hours and I can't contact him. Something might be wrong. So that's my insurance policy. I hope I never use it, just like I hope I never use my homeowner's insurance, but it's there with me. So I keep my kits in these containers. I went out and I got some Gatorade powder, used up the Gatorade in them, and I use those for my kits. They're easily identifiable. I can tell what they are by feel. I keep an inventory under the lid and I check each before each trip to make sure that everything's up to date and everything's been refreshed if I've been using things in there. Now I wrap a piece of duct tape around my first aid kit because that makes it much easier to identify quickly if I need it quickly and I can actually identify it by feel. Plus duct tape, everybody needs duct tape. So let's look at the first aid contents. When I pulled these things out of my kit, I was actually kind of shocked by how sparse it seems to be, but this is what I bring with me. Always bring moleskin and here's a pro tip. Moleskin can be used not just to treat blisters, and you definitely don't want blisters to ruin your trip, but it can also be used to make repairs and rips in your equipment or clothing. I bring a small pair of scissors. I tried cutting the moleskin once with a jackknife, and it just didn't work. So I have the scissors there for cutting the moleskins. I bring Tums just because I'm susceptible to heartburn if I've had too much chocolate and a lot of trail snacks are chocolate and there's nothing worse than sitting in your tent with heartburn and that takes care of it for me. Bring safety pin, nail clippers, tweezers, tweezers to pull out ticks. This little black container, 
If you're old enough, you'll recognize that's a little film container you used to send the film into the developer. I keep the over-the-counter medications in there, the vitamin I, ibuprofen, Tylenol, Claritin. I also have some Glide. It's a lubricant for a hot spot, chafing, that sort of thing. After bite is for treating insect bites. I have a triple antibiotic and I got a bunch of Band-Aids. And that's actually it. So the next question I have to deal with is how much access do I need to the first aid kit? Well, I've only needed it once for immediate use in the past 16 years. That's when I slipped on a rock, gashed my elbow, didn't even realize my elbow was gashed and I saw blood all over the place. And that's the only time in 16 years I've really needed to get into the first aid kit to deal with something right there on trail. So that begs the question, where do I carry it in my pack? Well, I don't need constant access. I'm not going to keep something, take up my precious space for constant access on something that I have only used once in 16 years. So as a review, if you've seen my backpack video, this will be familiar to you. I divide my backpack accessibility areas, so to speak, into different categories. The side pockets are the things that I need quickly when I'm hiking, such as water and snacks. The front mesh to the pack, that's the stuff I need to access quickly, but it's no big deal to take my pack off. That's things like a raincoat, toilet paper, bug spray, sunblock. Tied to the bottom is my tent because I need that I don't want to go rummaging through my pack when I get into a campsite, I need my tent. So inside is where I put the stuff that I'm going to use at camp or I'm going to use during breaks. Well, if I've slipped and I've cut myself or something's happened to me, yeah, I'm taking a break. I'm going to take my pack off and I'm going to open it. And my first aid kit is actually near the top. I know where to get to it immediately, but I just can't afford to use up that space for the immediate access. So just a few words about hygiene before I just talk about what's in my kit. First, out on the trail, you've got to develop good hygiene habits. Now that means not shaking hands with people, not using community food, being careful when you use the facilities, always wash up your hands, stuff like that. But you do have to accept this fact of life. You will stink. You'll be nose blind to it, but when you go into a town, people will know you're there. Never ignore oral hygiene. Never be too tired to brush your teeth at least once a day at least after your evening meal at the end of the day so you can go to bed with fresh breath. Be aware that shower and laundry opportunities, at least on the Appalachian Trail, are relatively rare. Actually, you might say that's not rare. About once a week on average. Now, when you get up into the backwoods of Maine, it's a little bit less, but you're going to be actually hiking and sweating for up to a week, maybe more, without a shower and without your clothes getting laundered. My daughter was just flabbergasted to learn that I only have one change of clothes when I'm out on the trail and I wear them for a week. So here's the contents of my hygiene kit. I have hand sanitizer. I actually bring two of those containers. One of them I actually keep with the toilet paper because you always need hand sanitizer if you need toilet paper and it fits nicely into the cardboard roll. But in my kit I have the other hand sanitizer. I have floss with me. I have a travel toothbrush and by the way just throw it out at the end of your hike if you leave it in the kit i've made that mistake a couple times it turns into a science experiment you know sitting there and on the shelf in the kit i bring this lume stuff that my daughter sent to me out on the trail i'm just going to try it out to see if it can do anything to make me at least a little less stinky if i have to go into a town so i'm going to experiment with that and let everybody know how it works out and then of course i bring my toothpaste and I bring some biodegradable soap. Now biodegradable doesn't mean you can use it in a stream. You've still got to use it well away from a stream, but that stuff works very well and only need a little bit to get things clean. And then I happen to bring some chapsticks. Before I finish, let's talk about some related items, some items that are related to the whole first aid kit, hygiene kit sort of things. I bring sunblock with me. I happen to use SPF 100. This is after having forgotten to put it on when I was on a presidential range. I learned my lesson. That goes in the back mesh of my backpack so that I can get to it easily and put it on when I need it. I bring insect repellent lotion. Now, I don't bring permethrin. That you can't put on your skin, but I get this from Sawyer. It's called Picaridin, I guess, and that seems to work well for me, and I put it basically on my, my lower legs. And here's a tip also. Keep it on your ankles under your socks because the bugs don't care about your socks, and they will sting right through it. Bring a bug net. Now, I thought this was a frivolous item. My wife got it for me. You know, I didn't want to insult her by not taking it for me, but I have been glad that I had it with me, especially when I was in uh, Northern Virginia in Maryland. The bugs were just out when I went through there, and there was another hiker who came by, and he was just going nuts screaming about the bugs, and I 
had a bug net and yeah he look wouldn't be wearing it but sometimes it's nice to have that and then finally bring a bunch of bandanas with you those are just great as washcloths just general purpose for cleaning and that sort of thing and you can actually use a bandana as a pre-filter if you're getting a water with a lot of sediment in it you can actually run that water through your bandana before you put it into your bag for filtering so that's it for the hygiene and first aid kits thanks for listening and if you haven't seen this video i recommend you take a look at it now